2018 McLaren 570S Spider Review, a crowd favorite. Holy, expletive that shouldn't be coming out of a 12-year-old's mouth. That costs more than my dad's house. So f and sweet. Yes, the kids like the 2018 McLaren 570S Spider. If I didn't know before Halloween night, I definitely knew after. And that was just one roving group of youngsters. I also got comments from adults, I don't want any candy, I just wanted to see the car. Cops on Woodward Avenue pulled up next to me, gave a thumbs up, whooped the sirens and then revved the engine like they wanted to race. I just smiled and did not engage in their shenanigans. Everybody wants a piece of this thing. Like I said before, for about the same price, you can get a Porsche 911 Turbo or a McLaren 570. If you want to blend in, get the Turbo, if not, get the 570. I'll admit I was a little concerned about the massive Pirelli P0 Cossa tires combined with the 35 degree temps in Michigan that week, but the, relatively, light away 570S took the freezing pavement in stride, or in ride, as the case may be. The only time I got a little sideways was this morning in the sheeting rain on slick, shiny black top. The execution it's hard to call the 3.8 liter, twin turbocharged V8 in this car a monster. It doesn't overwhelm your senses with vibration and noise. It just feels like a precision piece of hardware that doesn't do any more than asked, or any less. With your foot 20% into the throttle, it cruises away from most cars at a stoplight. Push it down 50% of the way and it starts to make things disappear in the rear view. Once you get to 100%, just hold on. It sounds great, exotic, loud, all of those things, but the one thing it doesn't sound like is music, like a Ferrari does. It's just a straight, middle C, plasticky roar that reminds me of the current turbocharged F1 engines. The paddles shifters for the 7 speed dual clutch are made from unfinished carbon fiber and beg the fingers to do the shifting. The three different modes for the powertrain, normal, sport and track, all have different shift characteristics, similar to the 675 LT we drove a few years ago. Normal is deceptively smooth, sport makes a little more noise and track gives a full kick in the back. After day one, I kept it in track powertrain mode and normal handling mode. Each is adjustable independently. The Alcantara wrapped steering wheel takes less effort than you might expect but the ratio is quick, and it gets quicker as the modes get more intense. It's electronically boosted, yet it still sends a little feedback from the road, which is always nice. That and the power make the car feel lighter than its 3,300-pound curb weight, on the brakes, not so much. Bringing all that velocity back to zero takes a lot more literal effort than getting it up to triple-digit speeds. The pedal is stiff and the first two inches of compression don't really do anything, which is kind of scary. Once you do get bite, you still have to push a little harder than is comfortable, but I think that's still better than them being too sensitive or too easy to push. Obviously the carbon ceramic discs were unfadable on the street. Unfortunately, I didn't get any track time in our limited stint with McLaren's Sports Series car. So maybe the McLaren 570S Spider was inevitable. Maybe McLaren's designers penned it a few years ago, right alongside the coupe, knowing from the start that the carbon fiber mono cell tube up. I'm still not sure about this gray color, McLaren calls it blade silver. I mean, this car is going to stick out no matter the hue, but I think I like the wilder stuff better, gimme orange, blue, or even green. Regardless of color, one look and you can tell this 570 is something serious. Everyone on the road sure knew. I love all of the scallops and air wedges, but I commented last time I drove one that I thought they might pick up road debris, and this time, they did. I was trailing a pickup truck on the highway and saw a subway wrapper flying around. It went under the car in front, which was the last time I saw it, until I got home and it was plastered across one of the front air intakes. Not cool though I don't really see a way to avoid it. I do have some complaints, which I kept a list of during my drive only because the looks, 
Power grain and suspension are so close to perfect that they're in number 39 semicolon s not much else to think about. The footwell area is way too narrow. I've been having a little sciatic type pain in my leg and keeping it angled toward the center of the car with my ankle cock didn't help. Also, the nose lift doesn't work when going in reverse or when there's a message on the screen like passenger not belted. That's a problem because I needed to raise it under my driveway, I want it slammed while parked overnight, and then I needed to raise it back up to get out. You'll have to do that first, before you go in reverse. Don't let anyone tell you the Ferrari California isn't a real Ferrari. I haven't actually heard anyone saying that, at least not since it revamped the California into the California. The infotainment system is a little convoluted. It takes some time to get used to. The central button takes you back to the home screen, but there is a lot of delays sometimes. I also found it damn near impossible to cancel route guidance after I accidentally initialized it. It also doesn't jive with polarized sunglasses, so keep that in mind. None of the exotics has a good infotainment system, so this isn't too far from the competition, but damn dash Kia can do a great one, why can't McLaren? I do love that the radio stays on during startup, so when you plug in your phone as you sit down, it starts playing through the speakers and doesn't have to cut off during ignition. Finally, the seat adjustments are on the inside of the seats next to where the tunnel would be. You can't see them, you just have to jab until you find the right one. I can't remember which manufacturer has the same type of thing, but the layout comes up on the screen once you start met.